Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hello and welcome to Sepang for a special Assetto Corsa event. This is the K car battle here at Sepang. We're going to see who is good, who has the best technique when it comes to trying to hustle these small 850cc Daihatsu Miro L700s. Better known here in Malaysia as the Produa Kalisa. You can see these guys really hustling these cars along here. Shades of K car global racing coming right up. So far we're just at the end of the practice session there. Ilham Kabi is on pole position followed by the man who has Ayam Sadu in second and King Hussein aka Rashid Ramla there in third place. Rashid Raida brother and Javier Alvarez is in fourth. So now we're going to head over to qualifying and as we wait for the cars to come out we're on board with um, with our camera car right now. <laughs> yeah, we're on board with the camera car, which <laughs> is parked in the pits yeah. along with all the other cars <laughs> at the moment. There is a 50, 59 second um, cooldown period between each session in a set of Corsa. Just enough time to have a quick look at those standings. Again, in Ilham Halabi is the fastest man out of track. Right now we see Ayam Sado in second place, King Usin in third, with Javier Alvarez in fourth place, Gabi Bear in fifth, RY Simrace in sixth, followed by Faruz F in seventh, Mamad Sharil there in eighth place, Afar in ninth, Calvin, uh, Calvin Ha there in tenth place, followed by Frey Lina in eleventh. So it's going to be very interesting as we can see there, qualifying is just about to begin. We're going to see the cars begin to pull out onto the track. So we've got to wait for a car to go on track, and then we the can track, go yes. enable the cameras on there. <laughs> yep. Okay, so our first in track is Gummy Bear. <laughs> yep, and you see the Gummy Bear in the black. Uh, the Hatsumira, aka Prudor Glisa. Very similar car there. Of course, this one is the rather sporty two door version. And by sporty, we mean it's still an 850 Daihatsu Mira, still with the lack of power. But uh, definitely going to be a real challenge for these drivers coming up to the corner here. I have driven around the track myself, and I can confirm that uh, the best lap times for everyone out there is going to all come down to. Uh, being able to carry the speed through the corners, it's a real momentum car, in fact the real definition of a momentum car. Right now we see there Gummy Bear, he's one of the drivers that could do quite well, a definite top 5 prospect out there as he's going around his warm up lap. It'll be interesting to see what these guys can pull out. It's a 10 minute qualifying session right now, heading down the straight, coming into the braking zone there beautiful shots of the Sabang circuit. That's the wonderful part here of about a set of Corsa is that we have the ability to mod the tracks so we've been able to bring to life the Sabang circuit here and these cars. Special shout out to Kam who is one of the dr one of the guys who are really put in the hard work to get this car into a set of Corsa as well as all the other members of the Sim Racing community as well as Sim, uh, Speed Tavern and a special shout out goes out to the server host right now, Tadakaja, who's also helping us out quite a lot with hosting the event. So there's quite a lot of people behind the scenes bringing you this fantastic view of Sepang in these K cars. I'm still not able to get to other cars, so let's just stay with Gummy Bear. Yep. Right now he is the first car out on track, he will begin his lap time fairly shortly indeed. There are other cars out on track as well, you can see them coming up behind. With only 10 minutes of qualifying, how many lap, hot laps do you think they manage? Well if they're out there basically flat out from the word go, they might be able to get in 3, uh, although most drivers will probably only get 2 useful out laps. It's a 3 minute three lap time there so it's going to be a real challenge to see and it looks like yeah it might just be two laps so it really is pressures on right now for these guys to get a good lap time out there on track 
they have been able to do half an hour's worth of practice there so they should be good to go from that respect but right now we're having a look at Jasri Junos in that red car in the distance there up ahead King Hussein in the pink machine and there's quite a few cars out there um, circulating right now pretty much all of them have to be out right about now simply because uh, it takes so long for these cars to go around the track here that you really only do have two laps worth of um, hot lap so the racing guys are usually very agile of fast cars today they have a challenge on driving a slow car absolutely so a little bit more about the car 850 cc's of raw power about 56 horsepower uh, in a very lightweight, I believe a 600 kilo chassis, so it really is a challenge of uh, trying to um, sort of keep the momentum up through the corners and try and do the best you can with the limited amount of power you have. The car does handle quite well however, so it'll be quite interesting to see how these guys go around the track and it really is going to be a challenge as to um, it really is going to go, come down to driving skill these cars here. I can confirm that uh, despite uh, rumours of the contrary, these cars don't have traction control, although it does feel like it. You very, it's very very hard to break traction in these cars here. It's all about trying to go through the corners without scrubbing the speed. You can see that Ilham Plabi going very nicely through the corner there. Coming into the braking zone here. A few times when you're really going to have hard braking in these cars coming into turn 9. Perhaps to one point on the track where the police could be quite quick. Climbing up over turn 10 and turn 11. Turn 11 is really tricky in these cars because these cars surprisingly want to rotate quite a bit. They want to sort of uh, oversteer uh, quite a lot there. We can see their Shami Aizan in the background as they come down through the hill. Turn 12 here, it's going to be flat out in these cars. You can see the car just about trying to lift its uh, rear wheel off the, off the floor there, just these drivers pushing as hard as they can to try and get a good lap time. We're on board with Shama Aizan, it gets the car very sideways indeed. These cars are only running on a 165 tyre, road tyre, so you're going to see these drivers, despite uh, going relatively slowly, they're going to be sliding around quite a bit over the course of the race. Seven lap race coming up after this, and it looks like some of the drivers might be able to start up one more quality lap. If they do get across the line before the time is up, the uh, session will go into overtime, and you'll be able to squeeze one more lap into the session then. But Ilham Labi there, he's up, up into fourth place at the moment, but uh, we'll see how he goes coming across the line here. And it looks like he goes up into second place. So right now, with 3 minutes and 20 seconds left in the session, Gummy Bear is in pole position, Ilham Habi is in second, Freilina is in third, followed by Musharil and Shame Aizan da in fifth. Right now we're watching the Spanish import there, Javier. Javier Alvarez managing to get himself up into second place. So he's working in tandem there with Tadakeja, who is in third. Javier doing very well indeed to try and get to grips with these cars. A very alien sort of car to him in comparison to the cars that he's driven usually in iRacing. A lot of these drivers would not have driven a car like this. Underpowered, undertired, but with a relatively good chassis balance. That's what uh, K-Car Racing is all about. It's about trying to maintain the momentum through the corners there. Now of course there has been a long history of racing K cars here at Sepang even though it might not seem like the most obvious choice when it comes to a race vehicle to drive around Sepang here but we have had um, quite a lot of uh, racing series that uh, involve K cars in MSF as well as the K car global endurance event uh, which is a I believe a 24 hour race the last time it was run yeah Four it K -cars. was a 24 hour race yeah intense <laughs> Absolutely. The cars might not look like they're going any faster once the green flag drops, but uh, definitely 
quite good fun out there. So right now I am Sado is in pole position with a fantastic time. Three minutes and three point six seconds. That's very fast indeed. That's two seconds faster than anyone else. King Usain there in second place with a 305.087. He's in second place. Gummy Bear is in third with 306.131. So the lap times are beginning to thump, to tumble quite a bit. If these drivers can make it around this lap, they should be uh, able to, to start yet another lap, perhaps get that third qualifying lap in. It's a big cut there from Ayam Sado, losing all the momentum coming out of the corner. That's the trouble. It looks like it's going to be an easy way to get some speed, but unfortunately you really can't carry too much speed through there. He's going to have to come around and try and do it again. There's 50 seconds left. Some of the drivers will be going on for another lap. Some of them might not be able to make it. You can see there, Carl Goodhart there, just come off the road. He'll really have to push quite hard there. I am Sado. He decides to pull over and not make any more laps, and he'll see if anyone else can beat his time. Right now, RY Sim Racer really pushing that. That should be an L700 around quite a bit there, pushing the car to its limits, coming into the braking zone here. It could be really careful. And the brakes of these cars are quite good, but uh, they do have an upper limit. They will lock up. There's no ABS, no traction control in these cars. So the drivers really do have to, in order to try and maintain the speeds that they need in order to... Uh, do a good lap time, they really have to avoid locking up the, the tires at any cost. It's all about trying to keep the momentum up in these cars. Coming into turn 12 there, you can see the lean on these cars. They're definitely road-based cars. You can tell when they feed the, these cars into the corners there. Just that set amount of roll, a little bit of oversteer just to try and get the car turned in for turn 14, which tightens up onto the back straight. We're now into overtime. And King Hussein is the first man to finish his lap followed by Farouz. Farouz Fazil there in 8th place. So King Hussein, his best lap time is a 305.087. Farouz Fazil there, 308.647. Any time quicker than a 308. It really is going very fast indeed in these cars here. We can see there King Hussein Ayam Sado decides to cross the line and Javier Alvarez manages a 307.440 that's just about the best he could do in this particular session. Right now we're with Afa, he is one of the few drivers there still trying for a good lap time, he's pushing very hard indeed. Has he gone too far though? You have to be careful around this track because the limits when it comes to corner cutting is quite strict. You have to be fairly careful coming through this section here as well. You can take turn 5 and turn 6 here at Sepang flat out, that's the corner that Afar has just come across, but it is very very difficult indeed. Now coming to the section here, just a dab of the brakes in order to get the car turned in. Really a fourth gear corner there, I think uh, Afar just found out uh, trying to carry the speed through there. It's a late braking car here. You really do want to avoid using the brakes as much as possible. Nicely through turn nine. It's all about not trying, trying to not scrub. I think we lost Matt there. We're nearing the end of qualifying. And uh, we should be seeing the grid very soon. And I think Matt's not available right now. So far, we see, uh, we, we've seen Ayam Sado in the pole position, followed by King Hussein. Danish Iman in third, and Dami Bear in fourth. And Shami Azan, who just installed a set of Corsa near minutes ago got himself a 306 that was absolutely interesting <laughs> there to see someone playing multiple uh, 
motorcycle or platform sign simulation driving racing. Okay, so we've ended. Now we're going to go for the grid. Balas sikit mah Hahaha Dah liter lah Race lap to Joe So that was a havoc from the Discord channel <laughs> I'm still getting hold of Matt I couldn't get him Hello Matt, where are you Matt? So looks like I have to take over for a while. Let's go to the grid. <coughs> okay. In the front of the grid we have I am Sado. So pardon the leaderboards there. I'm in the pits. I cannot join as a spectator. I have to join as a racer. And we'll be seeing the first few hundred meters battle towards uh, turn one. Next to Ayam Sado, we have King Hussein. And after uh, to the right side of him, there's Danish Iman. And there's Gummy Bears in fifth. Shami Aizan in, I mean, fifth actually. Okay, waiting for green. Let's go off. I am Sadio takes the quite a leap there, going into the drag race to the front straight. The massive lineup of 17 cars today. See three wide there. Going into turn one. Will the two third and the fourth cars survive here? Oh, there's some body rubbing there. Between King Hussein and Dummy Bear, I guess. In second position, we have Ayam uh, Am Sado. Uh, first position, we have Ayam Sado. Behind him, there's Danish Iman. King Hussein is following by. Let's go on board. Some guys in the mid pack. Now Javier Alvarez is side by side with Tanda Kerja, Tengku Ishak is going into turn 4 And he got hit, gets hit by Ishak there Go to door incident and he's battling out with Kelvin Ha And Gummy Bear Massive Let's go outside to the outside camera back Awesome cars, yeah, very slow cars, but really competitive. Let's go. Let's see what's going on with Mohamed Sharil. He's a real life Kalisa driver. He's on to the slipstream of Shami Aizan, his teammate in real life racing in MSF. I wonder where it's meant. <laughs> So uh, right now we're seeing we're on board Mamat Sharil Marfudin. He's trying to catch up to Shamir. Behind him there is Afar, Afi Fadlan. They have all their lights on. <laughs> Let's see what's going on with Afar. Shamir. Afar just got Plus two positions there. Nice line there between all of the competitors going very steadily into turn 14, going pushing their cars to the limit to turn 15. Let's see the race leader right now is 
I am Sado. So as he goes on to the finish line for the first lap of seven laps planned tonight. He's followed by Dani Shiman and Shami Aizan. Oh, what happened to Shami? Let's go on board with Shami into turn one and Danish locks up his brake there hi man I'm back <laughs> to me I have no vision right now oh okay 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 I'll turn on the TV for you <laughs> yeah unfortunately my computer just uh, on the blue screen there oh no <laughs> but so, in any case back on with the race I'm back here with you I'm Sado is up in the lead three and a half seconds away from Iman Danish, Kingusin is in third place, and we're on board with Shami Aizan in fourth position. We're on the second lap right now. And the other thing these guys will have to look at also is the fuel load. These cars are very sensitive with fuel, so it'll be quite interesting to see who's got the best fuel strategy. Hi, Jai, Bo Jai Bluebird, nice to see you, and uh, yeah, see you a very nice indeed. Of course, it would be remiss of me to say that Shami Aizan is a Carissa racer in real life as well, doing the MSF series. In fact, a big rival with um, one of our usual regulars, Michael Hafiz, who unfortunately wasn't able to enter the race right at this moment. But uh, that would be very interesting indeed, but it looks like Shami Aizan is really battling with King Usain quite a bit there, you can see the gap begin to close down just a little bit. Of course Shami Aizan has that experience in driving K cars and trying to keep the speed up, keep the average speed up and keep the momentum going in these cars. A real challenge indeed uh, for the... Whoa, he twitched there! <laughs> oh yeah. So these cars are very twitchy if you get them wrong, you can get them sideways, very easy indeed. So looking at Calvin Ha, looks like he's in a bit of a battle there with the car up ahead, yeah, and it there. seems to be... He's catching up to Shukran. Yeah, this could be a very interesting battle uh, for the guys. That's Calvin Ha with SF Hobbies, aka Shukran. And you can see Calvin's really pushing that Kalisa as hard as it'll go, really diving in deep into the corner there. They're side by side, coming down the back straight there. It's going to be a slipstream battle heading up towards the final corner there. Will will Calvin be able to do anything about the car up ahead? Coming into the braking zone there. Shukran trying to break the stream, the slipstream effect but unable to do so. He goes defensive, Calvin Hart goes around the outside. Will he be able to make a move, go around the outside? He's pushing the car as hard as it'll go, but unfortunately he's <laughs> had to go into the pits. <laughs> oh, that's kind that's of... Spect <laughs> that's spectacular stuff <laughs> indeed. Um, it looks like Ilham Labi is also in a bit of trouble there as well. I wonder why he went into the pits. That's very, very strange indeed. It looked like he was just had a massive understeering moment trying to go around Shukran and unfortunately ended up into the back of the pits. It's very, very strange stuff indeed. But meanwhile, Cheryl Norfordin is under a lot of pressure there from the man behind him, Tadakaja, aka Taku Ershad, who is pushing the car very hard indeed, trying to catch up with the car up ahead. You can see it's all about keeping the momentum up. These cars can achieve relatively modest speeds coming up through here. They're, you can see that Ilham Labi getting up to about 132 kilometers an hour at the speed check at turn four, coming around the corner there, really trying his hardest to get past the car up ahead there. We're going to go side by side through the bend there, Gummy Bear desperately trying to find a way around Ilham Halabi. We know Gummy's got the, the pace in the car, unfortunately he hasn't quite been able to get the car up the field. Coming up to turn 7, 8 is going to be really tricky there. We're on uh, Javier. Right now, we're, yes, we're on Javier Alvarez. 
at the moment. He is also trying desperately to catch up with Shukran, who was fighting with Calvin Ha, but it looks like he's got the car very sideways. That could be an opportunity for Javier to try and get past. Slipstreaming down into turn nine. Shukran's taking a very defensive line. Javier is going to be forced to go around the outside if he wants to try and get this to work, but he could do the old switch back. Yes, it looks to be the case. Shukran had a massive understeering moment there. He tried to cover off the inside, but uh, he couldn't quite get the line to work. They're going to go side by side. The two white Polisas there around the outside of turn 11. Who's got, who is it going to be? It looks like Shukran's just able to keep the car up ahead. This is absolutely fantastic stuff. They're going to go side by side down into turn 12. He's going to be all up into the braking zone here. Shukran still has the inside line, but he won't be able to hold on to it to, for too much longer. As Javier will have first dibs on the inside line coming in through here, but Shukran just about manages to defend. He goes wide. Shukran goes very wide indeed, and that lets Javier through into 10th place. Javier Alvarez now up into the top 10 position. Meanwhile, Tadakadija is side by side with Sharil Norafudin. I believe there. Ooh, there's contact. There's contact at the final corner there. This really is a very, very high speed, well, a very, very low speed, high, highly dramatic battle going down the main straight here. Coming into the braking zone, you got the massive slipstream effect there. These cars very boxy, not very aerodynamically efficient, but they do give off a fairly good slipstream for the speed. We see the Tadakaja going to go in on the inside. Will he be able to make it coming around the first corner? Just about manages to make the car stick around the inside. But of course, if you're on the inside for turn one, you're not going to be on the inside for turn two. Sharon Morafudin in still in the inside lane there. Keep on just about <laughs> to make it work there. Yeah, there was a car further behind. It looked like Kim Hussein was involved in that little incident but they're up and running pretty much in the same order as they left. Ilham Plabi is still trying to sky his way up through the field as well, but Tadakaja there really pushing hard behind Sharon Orofudin. This could be a very, very spectacular battle going through there. Lap 4 out of the 7 lap race, and it looks like Sharon still has the upper hand. Two black Kalisos pushing very, very hard indeed in order to try and get past fighting his way through the exit of turn 6, coming into turn 7, turn 8, and it looks like Tadakaja is going to have a look, Ershad is going to have a look coming around the inside, and Charles gone wide, Charles gone wide, Ershad there having to keep on the inside of the exit there, but it looks like he's been able to overtake Sharil and he is now in to fourth position. Tanakaja has 4.1 seconds to try and catch up with the fast guys up ahead. But now we go on board with Ilham Halabi. He's battling with Kim Hussein. He's gone very wide on the corner there. And he's given up another position there to Ilham Halabi, who's really pushing that Kalisa as hard as in the goal. That uh, Daihatsu Mira L700 two door. Going around the top corner there at turn 11. Coming down through to turn 12, absolutely flat out if you get it right through here. And it looks like Ilham's managing to do that. He'll hit just about 130 kilometers an hour coming into the braking zone there before cutting back in and heading off into the back straight. Meanwhile, Sharil Murafudin is still not done with Tanakaja, aka there, they're going to go side by side. You can see the markers there the, that tell the driver where the cars are in relation to themselves on track. Tanakaja going very defensive there. There's another third car in the mix as well. Afa is also right up in the mix there. And it looks like it's going to be a three way battle. But if they battle too much, there's another car right behind them that could make a difference, Tanakaja in 4th there, Sharon Rufudin in 5th, 6th, really does depend, Ilham Labi is behind 
as well, ready to capitalize on any mistakes, but they're going to go side by side, coming into the braking zone, who is going to get that better line through turn one, it looks like Sharil's gone a little bit wide there, now he's battling Ilham Lavi side by side through turn one, will he be able to get it around for turn two, no he's not, that's two positions that he's lost in the space of two corners, that must really sting, but now he's got the bit between his teeth, lap five has been completed, two more laps to go, will he be able to catch up with the cars up ahead? Meanwhile, with two laps to go, Ayam Sado is still in the lead with uh, Iman Danish in second place, Shama Ayazan in third, and this battle up there in fourth, fifth, and sixth, Tadakaja, Afar, Ilham, Labi, and we're on board with um, Sharil Norofudin. Mohamed Sharil there going across the top of the hill. It's really turned into pack racing, very entertaining stuff indeed. The cars are chopping and changing positions all throughout the lap there. You can see Afa is right on the tail of Tarakaja. Will this be an overtake maneuver coming into turn 7 and turn 8? Coming down through the corners here. Tarakaja really throwing the car into turn 7 and turn 8. Whereas Afa just about manages to keep the car going there in 5th. Ashad really having to push the car very hard indeed in order to try and keep ahead of this pack of cars. It's really turning out to be a very entertaining race indeed for all the drivers out there. You can just tell coming out of turn 9 it's so critical. You can see Ilham Labi right behind there. It's going to be a real challenge to try and get it the car through. It tried to go around the inside there but uh, Sharon um, Afa is able to close off the gap. Ilham Plabi all over the back of the car here. Now coming into turn 14, this could be a critical corner for all three of these cars there. Ilham seems to have the better line, Afa has the better position on track, and of course Tadakaja aka Ershad is still up there in the lead of this particular battle. Now coming down the back straight there is going to be a slipstream battle coming down into the final corner. Who will get the upper hand coming through here? Urshad very close to the inside line there. Will he be able to make the car go around the corner? Oh, Afa just about managing to make that crossover move work. That was a very on the limit driving there. The car oversteering, then understeering, and Alpha just about manages to collect the car up. That is spectacular stuff, but now Ishad has the tour coming down the straight. The penultimate lap has already begun, and they're going to go side by side coming to third one. Who is going to have the better line coming through there? 140 kilometers an hour for Tikamu Ishad in the break in into the braking zone there at the speed check just about managed to keep the car on the inside line and it looks like Tadakaja is able to hang on to fourth place just for a little while longer. Afa is right behind him as well, really pushing very hard in the Afa has the slipstream there. Afa aka Afi Fadlan one of the drivers of the Afa 778 Underscore team in the previous season of AIMC doing very well for himself here. Tukum Urshad, one of the Dante's crew. Very, very fast indeed. There's a bit of a bump there coming into turns 5 and 6. These guys are really driving door to door and bumper to bumper, pushing the car very hard indeed. Let's see if they can feed the car through the next corner here. to the rubber strips there, you've got to use every single inch of the track when you're trying to keep that speed up. This would be a real, really good lesson to all the drivers who are involved in this special race. Right now, next to them, side by side with both drivers there. It looks like Ilham Dhabi is able to go around the outside, coming into turn 9 there, just managing to get past Afar. This really is a case of chopping and changing. Afa was really pushing very hard in order to try and catch up with Tarakaja. Meanwhile, 
Abdulham Pabi is also in the mix as well. Afa is behind him. Talakaja, aka Tabushad, is up ahead. Further up the road, you have you know, top three just about to start the final lap in a few moments' time. Really heavy to throw the cars into there. Very hard to try and get a good line coming out of turn 14, but it's crucial in order to try and get a good exit out of the corner there and try and for an overtaking maneuver. And it looks like they're going to go side by side down the back straight there. Ilham Plabi just about inching, inching his way past the course out there with Afa having a very close watching brief coming into the braking zone here. Hard on the brakes. And it looks like Tip Wershad's just about able to keep the car on the inside line. He keeps the car so far on the inside, he just about underwrites the Rolex name there on the runoff area. But unfortunately, that was not enough. He's unable to keep Ilham Palapi behind him. But of course, now he has the speed advantage down the back straight. He has the slipstream. He's going to come into the braking zone there. He has the ability to try and attack from the left or the right it looks like he's going to go into the inside into turn one and will he be able to hold off Ilham going through the corner here he just about manages to hold the racing line Ilham has to go wide and now the Gersha just about manages to keep the car ahead for yet one more lap the leader meanwhile he is on the final lap Ayam Sado is in first place with Iman Danish in second and Shame Aizan in third position it's a massive and 11 again. seconds 13 seconds, 14 seconds gap. Absolutely, he is really pushing that car very, very fast indeed. I am Sado doing very well for himself in order to try and get up through the leaderboard. Second place there is Iman Danish. We see it right now going through the corners there, but now the battle there is still raging on for positions four, five, six. And it really is a case of trying to get through there. Ilham Klabi manages to go through, coming into turn five. Just about managed to get the car around there in the lead, and he's starting to open up quite a bit of a gap there. Meanwhile, King Hussein is still battling with Gummy Bear for position. They want to be as far up the leaderboard as they can, just about as close as you can possibly get when it comes through coming out of turn five, turn six. They're going to go side by side. It's going to be a breaking battle coming into seven and eight, and it looks like. King Hussein has managed to get the car into 8th place and a spectacular overtaking maneuver there but Gummy Bear now has the opportunity to try and counter attack at the back half of the track meanwhile in the classic battle midfield battle there Shari Nurfuli has managed to catch up catch back up with these drivers there that's Ilham Labi in 4th place Tiku Urshad in 5th place Afa in 6th and in 7th place here is Sharmour Fudin, the one of the K-Car Masters that have been racing so well in sim racing over the course of this year. They're really pushing, trying to go as hard as they can into the corner. Afa gets very sideways and unfortunately Sharmour has to go even more sideways in order to try and avoid the incident there but it looks like they've spread themselves out a little bit but it looks to me like Ayam Sado is just about to finish the race. There we can see there in the bright yellow car, Ayam Sado wins the race a full 14 seconds ahead of Iman Danish, who's going to come home in second place. A spectacular result for the young driver. A rookie of the season for AIMC on the second season of the Adrenaline Impact I Malaysia iRacing Malaysia Championship and Ilham Labi manages to finish in 3rd place followed by Shami Aizan and Tadakaja with Afa in 6th place Sharon Rufudin in 7th Absolutely spectacular racing there King Hussein comes home in 9th in 8th Gummy Bear unable to try and catch back up he finishes in 9th place and Javier Alvarez is just about managed to make himself uh, get himself into the top 10. Shukran there comes home in 11th with Faruz Fazil there in 12th place. A spectacular job well done there from him. Meanwhile Calvin Ha unfortunately had to get, uh, run through the pit lane there. 
not too sure what happened with him, but uh, very unfortunate, a very, very quick race, hampered a little bit by having to go through the pits. Great leader there comes home in 14th place. We still have three cars left on track. RY Sim Racer. RY Sim Racer, I think it's Tamizi, right? He might be. I, I think it is, in fact. So RY Sim Racer, Tamizi there coming home in 15th place. And Budriz is out there in 16th. Well, unfortunately, he had a little bit of an internet connection there, and unfortunately, that spooked Jasri into a spin there, which is a little bit unfortunate. But uh, it looks to me like Budriz, despite his internet issues, will be able to come home in 16th place with Jasri Junos in 17th. So just a quick recap of the results there. Mm, sorry, I cannot pause that moment. <laughs> ah. mm. So this is so our, our first test of um, uh, race coverage on Assetto Corsa. So apologies mm. if it's a bit glitchy, but I think uh, right now we, we, sh we should have the, all the data we need. And Matt, thanks for the uh, race commentary. And Thanks. good luck on your race. Thanks, <laughs> You're going to join well, them? Yep. Um, these guys are going to continue racing on throughout the night, as is the standard. As uh, Alif Lam there saying, Katam, yes, we had a Katam issue there. But uh, luckily, the ping issue is not that bad for this, uh, for this race. And uh, hopefully, we'll carry on with that. It does help that the server is based in Malaysia. But in any case, that will be it from us. We we'll hope to bring you more content, not just on iRacing, but also on Assetto Corsa and other sims as well. We have some exciting things planned, so do stay tuned to Adrenaline Impact for more information on events yet to come. But for now, it's a special thanks to our director, Kara Alang. A special thanks to the man who, who helped mod the Dahatsumira L700 aka the Kalisa in a shout out to Kum of Speed Tavern and all the Speed Tavern guys for helping out special thanks goes to Pit Jordan and to our hosts for this evening Terakaja aka Tinku Urshad um, who did a fantastic job in running the server tonight but for now I've been Max Palmer and we will see you all in the next broadcast Tara. from Interformula and welcome to our research and development center. We do all forms of research and development all the way from designing and developing our own race cars to simulators to running cars in racing series and rallying all over the world. We also do a lot in the Asian Classic Car Championship so do look out for us. For any information do contact us with the number down below.